Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to do the review of my Hermes Kelly 25. I'm going to give you an overview about this bag, tell you some measurements, tell you how heavy it is, also share some pros and cons, as well as insert some modeling shots, as well as show you some pictures of what fits inside this bag. And towards the end of the video, I will also give you some, I'm going to call it initial final thoughts because this bag is quite new tell you if i think this is worth buying and if i would buy it again and as usual i'm going to leave timestamps in the description section down below so that you can easily skip ahead to whichever section you want to check out but before we jump right into the review i want to share with you some jewelry pieces that i am currently wearing and they are from a company called ideal so this portion of the video is sponsored by ideal and i want to say a big thank you for sponsoring as well as sending me these beautiful pieces and of course a big thank you to all of you because without you I would not be getting opportunities to work with these amazing companies. The jewelry from Ideal are handmade in Belgium and I really love their core values. One of it is accessibility with jewelry being so so expensive now. One of the things that they focus on is fair pricing for high quality jewelry. What I'm wearing right now is made of solid gold and it's also made from real diamonds but what is also one of their core values is sustainability they are using lab grown diamonds and it is a alternative and a sustainable alternative to natural diamonds i'm wearing two of their pieces right now a necklace and a pair of earrings but they're actually four pieces so the third core value that Ideal has is modularity. So each of these pieces can be interchangeable. The necklace that I'm wearing is called the Lina necklace. So it's made of this diamond pendant as well as a solid gold chain. And the pair of earrings that I'm wearing are called the Lucia earrings, which is made of a back piece as well as a diamond stud. Oh my gosh, such a fun way to really mix it up. So the way I think of it is purchasing a foundation base set. So like the necklace, a pendant, a pair of earrings with a stud. And then you can interchange it with other pieces that they have on their site. So one of it is I could just wear the stud earring on its own. And now that if I have the Lucia back pink piece, it becomes a totally different earring. I also have another piece from them and this is called the Apollo. This Apollo can also be worn as a necklace. You can actually put it together with the necklace or add it to the stud earring and now I have a new pair of earrings. So if you're like me and you have several ear holes, you can actually really play around with this Apollo earrings because you could wear one at this end and use any other earring and then like go all the way and have this chain link. So, so fun. This modularity concept not only makes uh, wearing jewelry very personal and you know fun because you can actually just change it up and have different pieces to match different occasions. I'm a huge believer in investing in good quality jewelry pieces, especially when it comes to pieces that you would wear very often. Earrings are something that I wear all the time, so I prefer uh, pieces that are solid gold or they have materials that do not need too much maintenance. So solid gold pieces from Ideal means that I can wear it for many, many occasions. I do a lot of exercise and I do not like to change out my earrings. So knowing that I can wear just a single stud because it's solid gold means I can wear it working out, going to the shower. I don't have to worry so much about it. And if I want to change it up, I can just put that back in. Or if I have other pieces, I can actually change it up for different occasions. So that extra investment for quality and that modularity really really makes these pieces so so fun so if you want to check it out i absolutely encourage you to go and check out their website shipping is incredibly amazing the packaging everything was just wow it was superb so thank you again to ideal for letting me experience your beautiful items you will definitely be seeing me wear this necklace very very often because they just look so beautiful with a round colored shirt let me give you a quick overview of my Hermes Kelly. This is the Kelly 25 in Epsom leather in the Cellier construction. This color is gold and I have gold hardware. In terms of measurements, lengthwise it is 25 centimeters or about 10 inches. Heightwise it is 18 centimeters or 7 inches. As for the base, if I turn it around because it is a tapered 
uh, bag so from the bottom to the top it will be cinched in so this base is about 9.5 centimeters or 3.7 inches and because it's cinched in it is going to be uh, smaller at the top now let's talk about the handle from the well, kind of like where you would hold it. So just right under the leather of the top to the top of the back here, the handle height is 8.6 centimeters or 3.5 inches. As for the width of the handle or the inner diameter, it is 10.2 centimeters or 4 inches. Now the strap that comes with this bag, so I'm actually measuring the original strap. From the top of the strap, uh, when you're holding it, up to the top where you know it's at the D rings here, it is about 45 centimeters or about 17.7 uh, inches. In terms of the weight, it is actually lighter than my Birkin, and I think Epsom is a bit lighter, so it's about 500 grams. Just like my Birkin 25 review, I'm going to give you more cons than pros because I want to be critical about this bag. It is very, very expensive. So let's start with the pros. So the first pro of this bag is a cons and it's so obvious. It's the strap, the fact that it has a D-ring and this D-ring uh, lets you put all kinds of straps. So you can either use the strap that it comes with or be creative and use maybe a shorter strap or a longer strap depending on your preference and maybe because if you're taller, you might want to have a longer strap. That is definitely a huge, huge pro for this bag compared to the Birkin. How I'm going to do a Birkin and Kelly uh, review after this. So I'm not going to talk too much about the comparison, but yes, the strap, mm, the additional D-rings here and uh, that it allows you to put a strap is a huge, huge, it was probably the number one uh, pro. The second pro of the Kelly 25 is the taller handle. This is I guess the smallest Kelly that they have that is a regular bag size, the one smaller than this is already the Mini Kelly and it is a mini bag. So this would be like the small version of um, their Kelly range. And this handle is tall enough for you to hold and as well as to put in the crook of your arm. Now, I think for most people, I'm not going to say everyone, but for most people, you will be able to put your hand through and put it at the crook of your elbow unless you're a really really you know you're a bigger person that maybe it's um it could be a bit tight but i feel like this um has been mentioned that most people can actually put the arm through and you can actually hold it at the crook of your elbow so that with the strap you know just the way this bag can be carried is a huge pro in terms of the size the kelly 25 is actually a really good size and if you're looking for a I guess small bag but not too small, the Kelly 25 is actually a really really good going out bag uh, for a day. It's, you know, it's compact enough for you to put just your essentials and maybe a little bit more as long as they're not like large essentials. But yeah, I feel like this as a pro, you know, it's not too small because sometimes small bags can be a little small but this is actually a good kind of like a day bag um, for essentials, for going out maybe like for four or five hours. Uh, I feel like this is a pro for the K25. And the final pro for the Kelly and particularly the Cellier construction is, wow, it looks so sharp. It looks like a proper handbag. It just looks so, you know, so professional. So uh, yeah, the word, I guess the word is sharp. It's very um, eye-catching with the color, you know, depending on what color you take, the color that I have is gold, it's very bright. So with the sharp corners, with the brighter color, it really, really stands out. It is a, it is a very eye-catching bag. All right, let's get into the cons. And I guess this is common knowledge. This is a very difficult bag to open and close. It is a bag that you need to set down or at least use both of your hands to open and close it. And then to add to that, I guess it's you know still the same con in terms of opening and closing is that every time you open and close it, can you hear that? It scrapes the <laughs> lock. 
so it scrapes the turn lock every time you open and close it it is really really unavoidable i have tried many many ways to sort of close it a little slower singe in the corners a little bit more and kind of like press it in but to do that it means i have to press the leather a bit more press the bag to close it in so yeah the closing is unfortunately um the hardest of this bag i used to own a kelly 32 in togo and that was a pre-love bag so the leather was already softened i had to use like a bit of my leg a little bit of my arm and push it in i find that the squeezing the top flap over the bag for the kelly 32 in togo was a little bit easier in a sense that i didn't have to like press it in so much but for the epsom because the leather is stiffer you do need to use a little bit more like squeezing in pressing in to get this flap over it's not as flexible this will soften over time and it will get easier but if you're thinking, well, I still love this look, I'm not willing to deal with the hard closure, then maybe the softer leathers will be better. So either Togo, Swift, or maybe like Chef, where they are softer leathers that would make the closing a little easier. But in any case, you still need to have the both of your hands to, you know, close. I'm not going to compare it to the Birkin, but you can you can kind of hear it in my head with the Birkin. If you want to watch that, you can see that it's actually much, much... You don't have this issue with that bag. So yeah, closure is definitely one of the big cons. To add to that, uh, it is my second con. I feel like it's not good to do this. So a lot of us uh, would say, you know, why don't you just carry the bag like that, right? Go out and like this. I personally don't like to do it because... It is actually really bad for the handle and for the back of the bag. Maybe if you know you're just walking from a short distance from one point to the next point and you, you do need to open your bag again very quickly, then I think it's okay. But, oh, you know, carrying this bag continuously like this, I honestly don't think it's good for the bag. And, you know, we did a little survey on our Luxury Live show and most people will close their bag so you are again to the first con constantly opening and closing you know which is which can be very annoying the other con for this bag and it's leading from the first two cons is from personal experience this is not an airport handbag i was using this bag to travel uh, from singapore to malaysia and i was thinking oh my gosh so great with the strap with the handle i can cook, cook on my arm and I had my passport and everything inside this bag because it was hard to open and close and I didn't want to carry my bag like this for longer periods of time but I wanted to keep my belongings safe which is my passport and my wallet every time I had to go through multiple security checks whether it was immigration, passport, security and then security again I was constantly struggling with my bag opening, closing, opening and closing and with that the constant scripts on the turn lock it is, it is a con. It is not a airport bag. If you think it is, tell me how you get around it. Maybe, again, if it was a softer leather bag, it would be better. Or maybe you had another bag that you know kept your passport items, the things that you need to take out more often. Then, okay, I guess you know you got to mix around with this bag. But yeah, it is a con. You know, you think that this would be a great traveling bag with the handle, with the strap but there are those limitations because of the flap closure. The next con is capacity. Though I said earlier, as a pro, it is a good little bag, you know, for going out for the day, but it does have limited capacity. So as you can see, uh, it is only about halfway up. So at the top right here, you do need to singe, in, singe the bag in quite a bit to ensure that you can actually close it because you can see the top flap um, where the handle is, it's only about maybe an inch and a half, so you do need to keep it quite tight, otherwise you will not be able to close this bag. For the Epsom, it is even more strict, right? The, 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 the leather is so tight that you really need to keep the top part of the bag here with thinner items. If you have like a water bottle or an umbrella, it's a no-go because the capacity is only midway point from the top to the bottom. Sorry, from the mid to the bottom. 
So maybe if you had the softer leathers again, um, capacity would be better. But the K25, actually the capacity is quite limited if you have larger items. So really it is a small bag. Um, it looks larger, the cellier looks larger because of the construction. But I would say the capacity is only limited to the bottom half of the bag. The original strap is strictly shoulder carry only. It is quite short. I think it is a con if you are thinking of carrying this bag as a crossbody. It is way too short. I am not a very big girl. But when I carry it crossbody, the handle does like sort of like just hits me right at my bra line. And it's a little high. You know, it looks okay. You know, you can get away with it. But I wouldn't say it's the most comfortable as a crossbody bag. Plus, Epsom being so structured, it does stick out quite boxy. But for the strap, if you are a taller girl or guy, you would probably need to buy the longer strap or get a third-party strap that is much longer. So if you decide to wear it crossbody, you will need to spend extra for the strap. So this is strictly a side shoulder carry only. My next two cons are particularly for the Epsom Cellier or any cellier, basically the Cellier construction. Firstly, um, it's the corners. So the corners are really, really sharp. They are, you know, that's the sharp look that I like, but it is sharp. And I find myself when I'm carrying this bag, being very careful of my surroundings. When I'm, oh, should I, I don't want to co compare with my Birkin, but with my Birkin, it has that round retourne, kind of retorn um, construction. With the corners here, I find myself being extra mindful of bumping it into, you know, side places, the tables, the, um, the side of the door. Because if it's bumped, it, the, the, uh, I guess you'll get damaged very quickly and it'll be very obvious at the corners. So yes, it looks really good, but it does make me be more careful of my surroundings just because it has that sharper corner. It could be me, but if any of you do find yourself being more aware of like, you know, corners bumping into the corners of your bag, please let me know <laughs> that I'm not the only one that thinks this is like strange. I, I, I find that I'm monitoring the corners a little bit more. My final con for this bag, and I'm really truly nitpicking this bag because honestly, you can wear it with anything, but it is quite a dressy formal bag. I don't dress very formally. I'm usually very casual and I still wear this bag but I can tell that it's not the most cohesive look. This bag is quite formal, quite sharp, very sharp and it really stands out. So it could be that kind of opposite look, you know, you're very casual and just really formal bag. But I do find that not every kind of outfit goes with this bag. It does stick, it can, all right. It can stick out a little bit like a sore thumb. You know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. For me, I will wear it with my jeans, my shorts. I can wear it very casually with my slippers. But it does, yeah, it does, doesn't really go. You do need to dress up a little bit for this bag. Guess it's just one of those bags that mm, will clash with your outfit if it's not right it, you do need to you know sharpen up a little bit because this is such a sharp looking bag so it could be a con if you are a very very casual dresser like super super casual and you're thinking i'm gonna wear this all the time you can i'm not saying you can't but it could look a little out of place all right, I'm gonna give you my initial final thoughts because this is still a very new bag in my collection. I only got it in January. Would I buy this bag again? And if I think it is worth buying? Ooh, let's start off with would I buy this bag again? I absolutely would buy this bag all over again. When I saw this bag in store, when I took it out from the box, I fell. I, I fell head over heels. It's the sharp look. It's the snooty looking bag that is so, so perfect. I love the Cellier construction. It is the most stunning looking bag that I have in my entire collection. My Birkin's beautiful, but this is, this is a thing of beauty. Wow, I just... 
I was speechless when I saw this bag. It was just wow, wow. Even today, as even as I'm looking at it right now, I'm just admiring the corners, which is why maybe I'm just like so afraid I get the corners bomb. It's the sharp look, it's the boxy look, it's just I can just stare at this bag all day, all night, and even after several months of looking at it, it still makes me smile. So yeah, I really love this bag. So I would definitely buy it again and again and again. Now, do I think this bag is worth the money? So I don't really like to talk about prices on my channel. Uh, there are other YouTubers that are more willing to share and I, I apologize for that. I'm not comfortable about sharing the prices online uh, on my channel and I, I hope all of you understand that. But I can tell you that um, this bag is actually more expensive than the Birkin. I think it's the Cellier construction. I did get uh, a shock again because you know you would think that after buying the Birkin I would get a little bit more you know jaded or like used to the price of seeing the same price on this bag and I did I kind of knew that the bag price was a little bit more <laughs> but I can tell you I had quite of a shock when I saw the price of this bag when I bought my Birkin it was um, maybe <laughs> like 18% cheaper so we're talking like you know big money five digits so this bag when I saw the price I I had to swallow my saliva a little bit I was like I didn't I don't remember it being so expensive so yeah it was a lot more and um, I was I was you know I was prepared but not that prepared <laughs> mentally anyway yeah um, is it worth that price wow I Though I would buy it again and again, it definitely took a dent out of me. Um, is it worth the price? I... <laughs> I love this bag. I'm going to be honest. I, I still feel like right today when I can... I have used this multiple weekends. I... If this, okay, I'm trying to find my right words and this is truly, truly me struggling to find the right words. If this bag was the same price as the Birkin when I bought it, I would say yes, worth the price because um, I feel that I get so much more satisfaction uh, from this bag despite the cons. I just feel that I'm reaching for this bag a little bit more than my Birkin. Not sure. So when I do my Team Birkin, Team Kelly video, I'm going to tell you all these things again and kind of put like solidify my thoughts on the two bags. Yeah, but if the price was exactly the same, obviously they weren't. Then, which is why I'm struggling because it was significantly more. And I still feel it is a little bit more more than what I was willing to pay but I paid it because and I love it okay but it's just that if they were if I was saying apples to apple pricing I said this was definitely worth the price but because it was quite a lot more um, it is a, it's truly truly a higher investment but you know with Hermes it's always a good purchase right it's one of those bags that I can easily recuperate my money if I need to uh, sell it one day. I'm pretty sure I can. <laughs> and I, I think if I look at it from that perspective, it's definitely worth buying, especially from the store. Uh, but for my own peace of mind, it definitely was, it was, it was a lot. It was a lot. So I don't know. Um, if any of you have these bags, let me know what are your thoughts. Is it worth the price? Is it worth buying? Is this Kelly worth buying? If you have the same bag as me when you bought in store, is it worth buying? Please don't compare it to outside prices. Don't like, you know, compare to resale. I think that's not a fair comparison. The prices in the resale market has been jacked up so much. So if you do that kind of comparison, of course, this is worth buying. But just the price on its own you look at it uh, as a bag on its own is the you know kelly worth purchasing 
I am 50-50. Okay, I'm, I, maybe I'm more 60-40, 60% less than yes it is. 40% just because I had that comparison to my Birkin, I feel like, like, oh my gosh, it's so much more. Which in a way I felt like, not that worth it, right? So I'm still, I'm still mulling over that price, you know, 60-40%. Um, so I'm gonna hold my judgment on that last point and maybe when I do a updated review on it, I will come back to you if this bag is worth that price that I paid. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's uh, review and yeah, I hope you found this to be helpful. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And again, I just want to give you one more reminder on the Ideal Jewelry. Again, you know, when you see this video, please, please go and check out their website right now. They are having a promotion. You can get discounts on their items and get a foundation set. So maybe a gold necklace, maybe one of their pendants. And then you can slowly build the collection and have that modular uh, you know, mix and match capability for you to personalize the jewelry for yourself. Anyway, thank you again for watching. I do hope you are subscribed. Please hit the notification bell as well so that you'll be notified when my next video goes up. Otherwise, everyone, please take care, please stay safe, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!